So, um, hello everyone. Uh, it's great that we just had uh, Herb's uh, MetaClass uh, talk earlier, because right now uh, I will be able to skip a few slides. So I just wanted to give a few thoughts about uh, this uh, awesome proposal. Uh, disclaimer, I'm not involved in preparing it or in any way. I'm just very enthusiastic about it. So, uh, well, let's get started. Basically, if I go even more in a nutshell than needed, uh, what really stuck with me, uh, the properties I really enjoy about uh, meta classes are that it allows you to enforce constraints, uh, to generate members, and transform existing members, uh, such as by applying defaults. So those really are the three most interesting properties, I think, that you can enable using meta classes. And uh, overall, you also have this wonderful opt-in mechanism, which allow you to name a subset of the uh, set of classes. So of course, you've seen this example, except like for the private part, which doesn't compile, fortunately. And so if we shorten it, we can also get the generated class like this. So you can see that after applying the constraints, preventing you from having a private member function, uh, it's actually generating a, a virtual destructor on your behalf, and it's also transforming your member function to make them pure virtual by default. So enough of examples already. Some of the thoughts I had about that was that this can be a very great tool in order to enforce uh, some of the constraints uh, concerning design patterns. Uh, you can also enable those design patterns by generating members and reducing the boilerplate and reducing, um, like at some point, uh, there was a design for uh, singletons and then uh, new language features made it evolve. If everybody was at, like using a singleton meta class, it would be very simple to adopt the new stuff everywhere in your program, assuming you're using a meta class. So, that's one. Another I really like is that using the compile time static reflection stuff, well, you can actually reflect on your whole translation unit, which means you can iterate over all of the members of a translation unit and maybe even discover some conforming types which conform to the constraints of one of your meta class. And you could just use the compiler in order to discover those in a huge code base. And you, if you flip things around, well, you could actually use your meta class in order to uh, exposed recurring bug patterns you notice in your code base. Another thing which I think was very interesting is that we get to think outside of the bounds of the language because of the opt-in mechanism. So uh, we have a language where if I want to write a container, I will have to uh, write some of my member functions and uh, add a type qualifier say that, that they won't modify any of the members. And when I want to modify members, then yeah, I don't have any overhead. But uh, using meta classes, we could maybe start thinking about having a construct meta class which flips things around. C members are const by default, and you could even think about uh, modifying the syntax so that it's now uh, allowed to put the mutable type qualifier uh, on some members to make them mutable. So maybe we can push this even further and go within uh, the, the code blocks, and here you have uh, an integer variable, and we assign to it later on during this method. So uh, what if this could be a compiler error, because uh, an int variable is now assumed to be const uh, within this kind of meta class? Uh, and of course, you just have to qualify it with a mutable keyword in order to get the different behavior. This could be very interesting. So. I encourage you all to read the proposal. It's very thrilling to read it. Uh, it's not like uh, verbose or anything. There's a lot of uh, examples of how this can be applied, and it's great. Also, you can compile uh, Andrew Sutton's Clank fork, uh, which you can find on GitHub with the link uh, on the slide. And you can also godbolt some meta classes online right now at cppx.godbolt.org. And if you're even into that, uh, I encourage you to host an experimental workshop at your local meetups uh, using those tools. Uh, we've given it a try at C++ Montreal, and uh, we've had a blast. We spent a lot of time just presenting what meta classes can do and help people figure out what they could do with the uh, example meta classes that come with the uh, fork. And uh, it really was a success, so uh, I wish you all the best of luck with that. Thank you.